What exactly is astigmatism and what does it mean for your vision? In this episode of OcuTalk, we'll be discussing astigmatism, the symptoms to look out for, and different treatment options with Dr. Maria Wynn Tanzitz. Dr. Tanzitz? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. <laughs> Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Primary Eye Care and Eyewear in St. Louis, Missouri, Dr. Maria Wynn Tantis. Dr. Tantis, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, I'm excited. Excellent, well, we're very excited to have you and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join us. Uh, before we get started, Dr. Tantis, do you mind if you uh, let us know a little bit about your background and your specialty? Yeah, of course. Um, so I am one of the lucky few that got to graduate during a pandemic. Um, so graduating a pandemic and then also getting to do my first year in practice during a pandemic has been absolutely fantastic. Um, so I work at a private practice located in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, we focus primarily on primary care, as the name um, tells us. Uh, so we focus on everything from glasses, contacts. We also have been branching out a little bit, focusing on dry eye as well as macular degeneration as well. Well, perfect. And congratulations on graduating and your first year uh, practicing. That's fantastic. Uh, so for our discussion today, doctor, we were hoping that you could discuss, discuss astigmatism. Uh, what exactly is astigmatism? Yeah, so I'm actually going to take this direct quote from um, the doctor that I work with. She tells patients all the time, like when you hear astigmatism, you hear ism. So you think it's a disease and in fact, it really shouldn't be thought of that way. It's something very common that a lot of people have. Um, but what it is, is that front part of your eye or just your eye in general, instead of being perfectly round, it's not. And so when light hits the front part of your eyes and focuses on the back part to give you a clear image, the light kind of scatters a little bit, causing your vision to be a little blurry. Gotcha. Well, perfect. Thank you for that information, doctor. Yes. And how does the vision differ from other conditions of the eye? Yeah, so with astigmatism, you know, you hear a lot about being nearsighted and being farsighted. So astigmatism affects your near and your far, which kind of makes it unique there. Gotcha. Perfect. And uh, how can you tell if someone has astigmatism and how do you screen for it exactly? Yeah, so the easiest way for us to figure out if you have astigmatism is having the patient come in for their annual eye exam. Um, so going back to the question of how we screen for it is, there's so many, one of the great things about living in the world is that there's so many pieces of technology that help us detect for um, astigmatism. We have the autorefractor or the keratometer that one measures the curvature of your eyes, but also gets us a general idea of what your prescription is that can tell us that you have astigmatism. Um, so that's the best way is just to come on in and we'll be able to help you out. Perfect. Well, we'll look forward to that. And um, were there any, uh, excuse me, were there, are there symptoms that patients generally show that they're like, okay, well, this, this is something that I have. I have astigmatism or like, is there something that the average person can be able to tell that, Hey, I have astigmatism. I need to go see my doctor now. Yeah. So a lot of the time, most of my patients will come in because they notice something at night, especially when it comes to nighttime driving, they'll see headlights on a car. And instead of that headlight being a perfectly round circle, they'll tell me it almost looks streaky or sometimes looks like an X instead of a circle or even like a star. And that is like a ding, ding, ding. You might have some astigmatism there and you could benefit from some kind of vision correction. Well, I'll definitely be sure to look at the headlights on the <laughs> oncoming cars now. Uh, but doctor, um, is it possible to have astigmatism in one eye and one and not the other or, or both? Yeah, it is very much possible. Um, so you can totally have astigmatism in one eye and not the other. But what also makes astigmatism really unique is that with one eye, you can have astigmatism, but you can also be nearsighted or have astigmatism and also be farsighted or just plain astigmatism too. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you again for that information. I appreciate it. And can it, an astigmatism be corrected? And what are the available treatments that, that, that are available? Yeah, so the good news is astigmatism can totally be corrected. Um, the most common way is either going to be through glasses or contacts. Um, with contacts, you kind of have a little more, a uh, few more options there because with contacts, we can fit you in soft contacts that a lot most people are in, or even kind of going specializing in those contacts into sclerals or guest permeables as well. Um, and then other options would also include surgery too to kind of help with that. 
Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Tancis. I appreciate that. And um, will astigmatism worse, uh, worsen with age? Like as we get older, does astigmatism get worse? Um, not typically, it doesn't get worse. Um, one way that it could get worse is if a patient does have a disease called keratoconus, where it's a certain level of stigmatism that gets increases every single year. Um, and that is another thing that we do check for at an annual eye exam, just to make sure that, you know, we're giving you all the necessary tools if you are diagnosed with keratoconus. Gotcha. Perfect. And uh, doctor, is there any new technologies or anything that's on the horizon in eye care right now that we should be on the lookout for? Yeah, so um, my answers might not be the most traditional answer, but I think something that has really skyrocketed is social media, especially in the eye care world. Um, back a few years ago, social media was just news for us to catch up with our friends and family, see what they're up to. But now it has become a huge educational tool. And I've seen so many optometrists and other eye care providers using this platform to educate patients on the importance of annual eye exam. Um, really showing what optometrists do and how we are more than just glasses and contacts. Um, and I think not only from the patient perspective, it also is great for us as optometrists because we're able to learn from one another, like, hey, I just saw this cool case of diabetes in the eye. This is how I treated it. But it also really advocates for our profession too. Um, we hear all the time, optometry is so legislated. And the best way for us to really further our rights and give us more tools for us to do is to show people that, hey, we are doctors. There are so many things that we can do and we play a big, really big role of overall healthcare as well. So awesome. I'm excited to see um, how optometry and social media affects all of our consumers as well as fellow colleagues as well. Well, definitely, definitely. We're looking forward to big advancements in social media. Thank you for that, doctor. And uh, before we leave today, was there anything that you wanted to let our audience know about? Yeah, so um, I think I kind of went over this a lot, but annual eye exams are so important. Um, even if you think your eyes are perfect or you know you don't have any symptoms or you don't even wear glasses or contact, it's still so important um, to make sure that you're coming in because a lot of diseases like diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure can affect the eye. Um, and you never know until you come in and we get to take a look at your eye and be able to kind of discuss that with you. So just come on in. We're, eye doctor is the best place to go because we don't do shots. So it doesn't beat that. <laughs> well, fantastic. Well, you heard it from Dr. Tansitz right there. Come on in, uh, get your eye exam every year. Uh, Dr. Maria Tansitz, thank you so much for joining us. Again, that was Dr. Maria Wynn Tansitz from Primary Eye Care and Eyewear in St. Louis, Missouri. Doctor, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you so much, Nick, for having me. I appreciate it.